You know who I am? So there was this guy. His name was Jeremy, about 30 years old. A really good Christian young man. And he prayed. He felt good about his faith. But the cares of life happened, as they always do every day. He slipped away from his devotion time with God, his dedication, and how he was devoted to God. He got busy, busy, busy. Things started happening, and he quit praying. He didn't have time to pray. And then one day, he said, I've got to catch a quick verse. And he opened up his Bible, and it fell on 1 Samuel chapter number 12, verse number 23. He read, But God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you and it smote his heart because the prophet Samuel told the people if I don't pray for you I'm sinning against God I'm committing a sin and Jeremy knew that willful sinning was wrong all of a sudden a scripture came to his mind that says he that knoweth To do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. He he felt bad about his devotion life. And he said, God, please forgive me for my slothfulness in my devotions and prayer time. And if you will help me, then I'm going to start praying again. I'm going to build our relationship back again. All of a sudden, he remembered a story about an old lady who had a wore out, wrinkled up, withered piece of notebook paper with no telling how many names on it. She couldn't get out and do anything, but every day she would go through the names on that list. It was her prayer list. And Jeremy didn't have any definite structure in his prayer life when he drifted away. He decided, and God inspired him to make a prayer list he sat down and he wrote his family members names down he wrote down his co-workers he wrote down people that were sick he wrote down current problems he wrote down needs of the world he wrote down Muslims, Buddhists Hindus everything that he could think of he wrote down on that piece of paper because he was going to pray all the way through the list but not only that he wrote down Worship and confession because he was going to also worship God and he was going to confess his sins if he had if he had committed any sins or or lacked anything in his life. And he said, This is going to be the key to cranking back up my prayer life. So he began to pray. Even though he had the prayer list and even though He was praying. It was still hard. It was still a struggle for him to pray and feel like he's barely touched the hem of his garment. 
but he read a story. There was a preacher from 1928. He talked about how he wanted to be the best preacher he could, and he knew that he could accomplish this through his prayer and devotion time. But he quickly got busy with other tasks. And he explains how he got back on track Jeremy read this story and it impacted his life greatly. He said the voice of the Spirit was calling him to pray. At that time, another velvety little voice was telling him to be practical, and he wasn't really one of the spiritual sort. You're just not called to pray like that. Only special people get that calling, is what the voice said said but that little voice hurt like a dagger and he said i could not bear to think it was true he was horrified by his ability to rationalize away the very ground of his ministerial vitality and power so that morning sidlow baxter took a good look in his heart and found there was a part of him which did not want to pray and a part of him which did the part of him which did not was his emotions. The part which did was his intellect and will. This analysis paved the way to victory in Dr. Baxter's own immutable words. Reminds me of the scripture that says, the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. As never before, my will and I stood face to face. I asked my will the straight question. Will, are you ready for an hour of prayer? And Will answered, here I am, and I'm quite ready if you are. So Will and I linked arms and turned to go for our time of prayer. At once all the emotions began pulling the other way and protesting. We are not coming. I saw Will stagger just a bit. So I asked, can you stick it out, Will? And Will replied, yes, if you can. So Will went, and we got down to prayer, dragging those wriggling emotions with us. It was a struggle all the way through. At one point, when Will and I were in the middle of an earnest intercession, I suddenly found one of those traitorous emotions had snared my imagination and had run off to the golf course. And it was all I could do to drag the wicked rascal back. A bit later, I found another of the emotions had sneaked away with some off-guard thoughts and was in the pulpit two days ahead of schedule, preaching a sermon that I had not yet finished preparing. At the end of the hour, if you had asked me, have you had a good time? I would have had to reply, no. It's been a weary wrestle with contrary emotions and a traunt imagination from beginning to end. What is more, that battle with the emotions continued for between two and three weeks. If you had asked me at the end of that period, have you had a good time? In your daily praying, I would have had to confess, no. At times, it has seemed though the heavens were brass, and God too distant to hear, and the Lord Jesus strangely aloof, and prayer accomplished nothing. Yet something was happening. For one thing, Will and I really taught the emotions that we were completely independent of them. Also, one morning about two weeks after the contest began, just when Will and I were going for another time of prayer, I overheard one of the emotions whisper to the other, Come on, you guys. It is no use wasting any more of our time resisting. They'll just go the same. That morning, for the first time, 
even though the emotions were still suddenly uncooperative. They were at least quizzent, which allowed Will and me to go on with prayer undistractedly. Then another couple of weeks later, what do you think happened? During one of our prayer times, when Will and I were no more thinking of the emotions than of the man in the moon, one of the most vigorous of all emotions unexpectedly sprang up and shouted, Hallelujah! At which all the emo other emotions exclaimed, Amen! And for the first time, the whole of my being, intellect, will, and emotions was united in one coordinated prayer operation. Body, soul, spirit. Jeremy read this story. It touched him. And he realized that even though he had his prayer list, even though he was doing better, there was a step further that he needed to go in the battle between his body, soul, and spirit. And he began to pray. And as he prayed more, it got easier. As he dedicated himself to that list and found his place, he continued to pray. And as he continued to pray, over time, he continued to fight. Some days were easier than others, but the Spirit came and helped him and gave him strength and told him what to pray for when he didn't even know what to pray for. He looked at scriptures, and he remembered the one that said, Ask, and ye shall receive. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. He remembered the one where Jesus said, If you ask anything in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. He remembered the story of the unjust judge, where the widow woman went and said, Avenge me of my adversaries. He said, No, leave me alone. I don't fear God. I don't care about you. But she continued to knock. And then he remembered the end of the story where it says that the judge was so weary by her coming again and again that he avenged her of her adversaries. And it says, if a man on earth will do that, won't God do so much more to avenge his children? And he continued to pray. And miracles took place. And God moved mountains. And he began to check off things on the prayer list where he seen God work and move in the impossible. But it all started somewhere. So, take this to heart. If you are having trouble finding time to pray, make a list. Wage war on your emotions, on your soul, on your body, and begin to pray and believe God, and you'll see miracles happen. You'll feel the presence of God.